Welcome to the energetic tune-up session for April 2023. My name is Yona Brindis, as you all know. Divine wisdom um, is uh, deeper than, um, you know, just dealing with your day-to-day -day stuff, okay? This is a, an alignment that triggers um, a deep uh, inner yearning and a strictness in a way, as you will see, like a more conscious reflection and choice on what spirit we are serving with our thoughts, our emotions, uh, sentiments, and our actions. Let's uh, look at the overall situation here. April represents the densification of what has been long predicted. A new reality is forming, and with it, more pressure to regenerate, reset, and purify all that is out of balance in our personal lives. Now, this sounds a bit cryptic, but most of you will actually feel what this means. Yeah, people will feel like very strict, kind of black and white, you know, pressurized. So it's a month where immediate self-correction is needed, guys. This is really important. Yeah, this choice that we have, that power to discern and decide what we lend our energy to, you know, becomes really important in times such as April, where we're going to see, uh, you know, a lot of the things that we have been talking about for for ten years or two two decades already. Okay, so when I call this densification, what I really mean is that it is embodying. So it, yeah, these events, these necessary evolutionary steps that have to happen for all of us. That is the totality of humanity to evolve are now manifesting in 3D. And these uh, things, these events, these, these evolutionary experiences, they come with a crisis. Why do they come with a crisis? Because we are currently on the threshold between the ego awareness and the I am awareness. Yeah, the barrier between the third and the fourth chakra, if you will, um, if you relate this to your personal energy system. So we have to let go of this um, striving for individualization that was part of the last 250 years of, of spiritual journey here in our societies. And now we have to arrive at a place where we realize that egoism, selfishness, and exploitation does not sustain, it's not sustainable, it is self-destructive. Yeah, so this is something that you can observe in history if you look back throughout all civilizations, that they all fulfilled a different purpose, they all fulfilled a different evolutionary step in our collective human consciousness development. And uh, even farther, you know, back beyond our historical documentation, each of these uh, larger uh, epochs fulfilled the purpose. And the purpose of this era that we're in here is about consciously choosing, is about discerning the ability to see and feel truth. So, the individualization without truth leads to selfishness, self-gain, exploitation, and yeah, egoism, evil egoism, as Rudolf Steiner calls it. And this is also why, you know, I have been doing a lot of workshops on the nature of darkness. I put this into the instructions for the energetic tune-up session. Yeah, it's really important for us to become more aware of where our energy goes, not just 
in how we want it to be, how we project it, or how we idealize it, that too is part of the ego paradigm. But word actually goes, and you all are capable of feeling that. It is the task here in April to become more aware of it and to make this a more conscious choice. The nature of darkness is duality, and uh, basically the light is surrounded by two different kinds of darknesses, the extremes of everything, and that is why we have to experience this as crises right now in our collective. Yeah, so there's no need to be afraid of this once you understand the mechanisms of this and also the purpose and where this leads to. Yeah, and here, you know, with receiving the roadmap to navigating this, you don't need to be afraid. You just need to be more conscious. You need to be more discerning. We need to align ourselves to truth. This is uh, in all my alignments, it's the, the the true self code, because without truth, there is no freedom, and without freedom and truth, there is no love, and without love, there is darkness. Okay, so look at those. I know this is not a very uh, good infographic, but look at the two extremes here, the Arimanic on the left, the darkness, that comes through the narcissism and uh, the following the, the animalistic drives, the fear, the projection, the extremes, the specialness, the, the lies, the trick trickery, the expectation, the inhuman treatment, and greed and betrayal and coldness. Now, this is pretty much what we're experiencing in the world right now, but at the same time, and this is the, the danger here for for us as spiritually inclined people, uh, there lies the darkness on the other side of this, the Luciferian, that tricks us into specialness, into mystification, into escapism, you know, creating a new reality, like an alternative reality, blind faith. And with it also externalizing our light, our power, yeah, uh, in a different way. This is particularly or we are particularly susceptible to this when we get victimized because there is a bit of a trauma here that we all carry in or for uh, these last 50 years namely those of us who have awakened a while back we <clears throat> have experienced uh, quite a bit of sort of fringe dwelling trauma yeah and uh, having been ridiculed and shunned, made fun of, and so forth. And that's what led to us uh, uh, falling for this uh, Luciferian specialness, the spiritual specialness, which um, is, well, densified, manifested in most of the New Age movements. So it's important for us to understand that, you know, the roadmap through this, this uh, yeah, <laughs> surroundedness by darkness is uh, clear in front of us and we all feel it and we all know it and you really now need to trust in it. It is the empathy, it is the wholeness, the self-responsibility, the conscious choice, truth and freedom that you choose through making your, your stance you know, based on your insight, based on your heart-mind feeling, based on your striving for healing and clarity and peace. That is what nurtures the light in you and basically what gives you the free ticket through uh, the crises. Yeah, the crises that was brought about by the ego, yeah, avoiding pain and seeking pleasure, yeah. That's uh, basically here um, how you could also see those, those uh, two darknesses. So April's intensity will be perceived differently from March which has been more internalized. I think you guys all felt that so there was a lot of internal stuff. We felt a lot of these energies, these speeding up energies in our bodies. There was a lot of re revelations, a lot of distractions, not very clear, very foggy. So as we are beginning to enter April energies, we'll begin to feel this external pressure more. So, you know, whether it's um, the COVID revelations, the climate change uh, misinformation or the uh, a collapse of the banking system, hyperinflation, all these things. Um, I forget them sometimes because I've been talking about them for so long. 
you guys all know what that is. April represents the densification of what was long predicted. A new reality is forming and with it more pressure to regenerate, reset and purify all that is out of balance. Basically a big purge in our personal lives as well. It will come with letting go of the good old times and emotional grieving and regrets, but also with many new connections and, and an increased social life. I will go a little deeper into this. As always with crisis, it can bring relief and creative input for new solutions. So let's look at this together. The failure of our egotistical and exploitative economic system is an, an imminent failure. Real estate banks and large corporations will have to go through massive integrity tests, as will we. In addition to our relationships, um, and they will be tested in regards to money, shared belongings, shared property, but also business partnerships. Without proper communication, guys, and mutual understanding of needs and wants, controversies, you know, conflicts can bring elevated emotional stress into our lives in April. On top of that, we must witness all this happening on the global scale, politically and so forth. Here, I want to point out that there is a new uh, currency system, system forming a um, alternative to the petrodollar, the BRIC system. And there is a lot that went on here in the last two weeks. Nobody really talked about it because of all the other stuff that was in the foreground, but um, Saudi Arabia, uh, Iran uh, have joined Russia and China, and so has Mexico applied for joining this gold-backed currency system. This is huge, guys. And at the same time, the Federal Reserve announced the release of their direct payment system, haha, at the digital dollar, yeah, the crypto dollar, in June. Yeah, so guys, this is what's really going on, okay? So as everybody is searching for answers, we need to expect disruption in our personal lives, and that there can be disruptions of communication, pu public transport, or public institutions. Yeah, uh, money transfer, for example. Do not be afraid, solutions will come in unexpected ways. Socialize, share, and enjoy coming togetherness with others. Prepare. A lot of people ask, how can I prepare for this? Prepare by securing only for the most fundamental needs. Yeah. Um, I have basic securities. I have a few hundred dollars worth of cash and necessities. Make sure that your personal means of transportation are well maintained. So if you, <laughs> if you, if there's something wrong with your car or whatever, it's a good idea to fix this now. So, same with dental work and stuff like that, because these disruptions can, you know, make it harder to to have these uh, sort of regular maintenance stuff done. If you have larger amounts of unused money in your bank, so this has been going on the last six weeks already. So if that applies to you, you may consider investing in businesses rather than in buying real estate. So the real estate war is on now, guys, um, and it will be almost impossible to get mortgages. Unless you uh, consider to buy a home that you want to live in. So homestead is always different. However, due to the time pressure that is now coming in, I recommend not to make hasty decisions. Try to sort out what you can until the 20th of the month, April, that is, and then relax your nervous system with regular mindfulness, energy work, and conscious breathing throughout the summer months here in the Northern Hemisphere because that's where it all where it will continue to escalate. April is a good time for physical detox and changing your diet and lifestyle choices. It is a time of relapse and temptation, which is also traditionally, you know, with the Passover, with the Ramadan, with the uh, Passion, the Lent in, in Christianity, uh, we are practicing refraining from, you know, all these temptations. There's a, a lot of uh, deep spiritual meaning to this, yeah, which also includes addictive structure. Um, you know, not just uh, substances, but also, you know, things like codependency and, uh, you know, the unhealed healer trying to fix everyone. Be proactive, okay? Um, if you uh, have issues with uh, physical aspects, 
if you are afraid of things re regarding COVID, long COVID, or uh, adverse vaccine um, reactions, then please go to my forum. There are hundreds and hundreds of articles. I've just um, conducted a video summarizing uh, the latest research, also on detoxing the side effects of the vaccine. Yeah, multiple protocols, there are multiple new studies all posted there, okay? Um, there's a lot of information there. The, in, the opportunity in this unprecedented time quality is an entirely new experience of your spiritual identity. And that is, guys, what we're gonna be talking about because all these other things, well, maybe except for the money part, yeah, are of your concern and they're in your energy, they're already coded in you. So I will mostly talk about this. It is not to be underestimated, yeah, your spiritual identity, as it can assist you in overcoming persistent karmic, karmic patterns and other deeper aspects of your soul journey. Yeah? Soul journey is huge. By the way, there's an Easter special on my website for the Grace Soul Self journey, 37% off valid until Easter. So as I have been pointing out for so many years now, the global awakening is a process that's very uncomfortable for our egos and therefore forms its own energetic entity. You have to understand that. You have to understand how your thoughts, your concerns, your ruminating, all that creates energetic entities. It's no different than a denser energy field that I've been calling the global shadow. So the emergence of evil or dark aspects of egoism is already in the energy field. It's already there. It's, it's really easy to see for someone like me and I know for some of you as well. So it's nothing new. You don't need, be, need to be afraid of it because you're already under the influence of it. Therefore, as we're all moving into the harsh reality of what this truth is, we will also be presented with our true purpose, namely replacing darkness through spiritual ennoblement. This is a new word, just yes, the refinement of your spiritual identity. Yeah, some call it purification. Um, I've also called it the stages of embodiment yeah, or initiation stages the ennoblement of the ego into the I am. This is why your readings are going to be a little more strict because it is no longer just about, oh, you know, uh, how to deal with your mother-in-law and those kind of things. No, this is big art, guys. The spiritual contextualization of our new reality comes with the insight that clearing and purification are natural stages of the alchemical evolution and ennoblement process of our consciousness without it without this spiritual contextualization we are utterly lost we get lost in our ego fear and you'll see this guys 80 percent of people in this world have no ability to contextualize this spiritually and even those who can still struggle with the embodiment part with the action yeah with the follow through so I want you all, since you have been training this for so long, yeah, you, you, you have a head start here. I want you all to remember this, how hard this must be if you just now wake up to truths such as, oh, your government does not have your best interest in mind, or oh, the food industry puts poison in food. Oh, the pharmaceutical industry makes you sick on purpose. Oh, the educational system conditions you to not question things and to not discern on purpose. Those are all realities that we need to face now on a large scale. Oh, wars are not fought for conquering resources. Not really. This is about a bigger power, you know, that needs to be maintained. It has to do with life view. Yeah. The... For example, the Anglo-American capitalism, you know, is a life view that is a principle that has dominated our society now for 
almost 180 years or more. So April's energies will continue to challenge us to willingly and consciously agree to this transformation. We have to go with it, guys, ready or not. The time has come for us to apply all that we have learned from the past, from history, and of course, our own journey and make better, more sustainable, healthier, and self-loving choices. I've added the um, uh, energetic secrets, secrets of Easter uh, in the instructions. The instructions is a, is a summary and a decoding tool for you guys for the whole entire month. There's everything in there. Yeah, I go in the, into the etymology of the word, of the codes, yeah, with quoting the origin of the words. I give you all the different aspects that are needed for you to fully understand the energies of this month. Yeah, they all apply to you as well, depending on where you have been seeing yourself in this process. And that's what I want to ask you guys. I know I can, you know, get into this monologuing, into this boring monologuing quickly, but I want to ask you guys, where do you see the collective right now? If we take those seven stages of embodiment as a, sort of a, a navigation map here, where do you see the collective right now? Where do you, what do you recognize as sort of the, the main focus? And obviously there's, you know, the lower ones, one, two, three, four, you know, are always included in the higher ones. Um, you know, the 20% that actually have gone through stages of embodiment without realizing it's, it's the karmic purpose, they can carry quite a few people, yeah? So we don't need to have 100% of people doing this, okay? This, this will take a few 100 years, okay, until then, okay? Until it's 100% and the whole humanity moves into a whole new level of, of, of spiritual evolvement, okay? But maybe just use yourself yeah, and your own struggles and your own sort of day-to-day -day inner conflicts. Where do you think we're all kind of stuck, even those, you know, that, that have a, a deeper spiritual understanding? The temptation of not looking, of just ignoring, resisting, becoming aware of the illusions of ego? I think so. I think that's very accurate. There's no possibility to move into truth collectively because there's still too many people not wanting to look past the illusion of the ego. They're not aware of it. They can't discern. This has to do with the educational system and some of the, you know, the toxic environment that we have. Now, those who have already accepted this, so you guys here, yeah, as a group of self-healers, hard warriors, conscious energy managers. You have accepted that long time ago. That was, you know, your, your fringe dweller trauma. You couldn't talk about it back then because everybody would just call you crazy. But where do you see yourself today? So you already embraced the death of your ego and uh, you already aligned yourself to the internalizing of your spiritual reality. But you still have a hard time sometimes trusting in it and making, you know, walking the talk, so to speak, making choices accordingly. Mm -hmm. That's where a lot of you guys are at. Now, some of us are also still dealing with the death of the ego. Okay. So, you know, that the death of the ego is synonymous of the, um, you know, the, the attachment to the spiritual, uh, to the material stuff and, you know, uh, inner child and the projections and victimhood and all that. If I would have to place it, what comes forward the most collectively? It is number five. The death of the ego is now forced upon us. Those of us who have not consciously and proactively worked on this will be forced through crisis. Yeah. 
and ignorance and looking the other way or holding hands and singing kumbaya, although there is something about that, <laughs> isn't going to resolve it, isn't going to avert it. Okay. So the themes here in April for all of us is, uh, you know, obviously first as, as, as a phenomenon, the, an active pressure phase, it's active pressure, it's purging active overcoming of the fear that feeds the darkness in us that is what we now have to deal with is it's very self reflective in that way because you know that's why i wanted you to reflect on these stages of embodiment because i wanted you to to train that yeah to look at yourself yeah, what that fear of darkness does to you how you cope with this and where you get stuck it does that through forced downsizing or letting go, um, you know, the confrontation with grief and, and uh, also, you know, the need for releasing all that anger that we have been holding in, especially the victim, the victimizer anger. It's a big theme here for many of you. And with it, uh, you know, the, this integrity test that I already mentioned. April has a um, on the signature of the beginning of the real estate and bank war, that's going to go on until 2025, guys. Yeah. And uh, same with the increased rage, injustice, re revolting, yeah, the protests, that's still going to go on. So we have this collective awakening that is fundamentally manifesting in war on all these different levels, media war, currency war, bank war, real estate war, um, house war, everything is a war, which is the ultimate duality. Can you see that? It's the ultimate duality. It's, it's like there is no way out other than either collapsing the whole thing or going into the balance, the middle ground, the harmony with it all. Which means that uh, on a collective level, there will be a moment of choice for leadership, for governments, for politicians, corporations. This, this, the next year and a half, guys, is is uh, all about choice. Yeah, because it has to do with integrity. It really comes back to the question: What spirit do I serve, or what spirit does this thought, the sentiment, this action serve? But in April, it's finally heading home. There's a shockwave that will go through the collective. You guys are always ahead of your curve. So for you, uh, some of these things may, may all be like sort of old news, okay? But don't underestimate what happens when the collective wakes up. So the code breaker, and that's, uh, you know, basically the, the, the navigation key here, the key to you, for you to navigate through this without struggle, is your spiritual journey, yeah? Refining, ennobling your spiritual identity, because that's really what it's about. That's the true spiritual reason for all these things that are happening. And some of you might be skeptical and say, well, how can... This be how can the spiritual reason for something supersede, um, you know, the physical 3D reality? Anybody a good guess how that is possible? How a spiritual reason is more powerful than, let's say, a 3D reason? Anybody an idea? It's very important that you guys all internalize this, that the spiritual reality is the template, the blueprint for what we are experiencing in 3D. It is backwards, guys. It is, you know, our ego thinks that everything that happens here in 3D has an effect on the spiritual. Well, it does because there's a two-way aspect to it, but... The spiritual realm, the divine nature carries the template. Nobody can debate that because that's what that's the power that brought us into existence. Okay? That's why. And in the spiritual realm, yeah, these templates, they have been written over thousands of years. 
not by humans. No, by the divine order of things. You're absolutely correct, but not like in the uh, the tablets of Moses or something like that. No, it is the purpose. The original reason why we're here. There is no stopping this. Okay, and that's why, you know, when you realize that, you also realize that you don't have to resist that. That the resistance just makes it become a struggle because you already have that as a template in you. And all of you here, I can vouch for you. I've witnessed your spiritual identity. I know you have it. I know you can locate it. I'm vouching for your spiritual identity. Which means that your karma, yeah, sort of the, the, all the things that, you know, you had to go through, you know, to balance stuff out, yeah. Things from past lives, things from, you know, uh, unconsciousness, okay, is already written. Karma isn't a punishment, isn't bad. That's your that's part of your purpose. But the bigger purpose behind that is the ennoblement, is the refinement of your spiritual identity. And that happens, uh, you know, whether you participate or not. If you don't participate, it happens slowly and with a lot of crisis. If you do participate, it can happen very quickly and without crises. So spiritual embodiment means not just to think, feel, and perceive more clearly and to liberate myself from inner and outer distortions, but also to act with the purity of the thought, the feeling, and the perception. That's where we are at right now. So seen from that perspective, this picture here that you all know too well our consciousness if we knew better we'd do better but in order to know better we need to understand first why do we need to understand first because if we don't understand it we don't appreciate it and if we don't appreciate it we cannot align our values to it if you don't know anything about spiritual reality how could you align yourself to it you think it's a bunch of boo-boo. Hmm? And to understand better, we need to connect within and allow our divine consciousness to dissolve the limitations of the ego. This is the journey. You have to shed all these limitations, and you guys are very familiar with that, what that means on a self-healing level. So that we can begin to understand what our ego cannot know this comes through mastering your thinking mastering your emotions mastering your choices that's when you enter into that state of true consciousness the heart mind when you can feel into words when you can feel into a flower when you can feel into a crystal or into a sound and a macrocosm of divine wisdom opens up for you. The ego cannot know that. Only your consciousness can. And with this refinement of your consciousness comes your spiritual identity. So the tool that you use for refining your spiritual identity is the focus on spiritual freedom. Because that's the next thing, right after truth. You are already willing to accept truth. Yeah, Freedom is you now executing your discernment and acting according to divine wisdom. It expresses in us when we can overcome the blindness and rigidity of our ego, period. And only then, once we are initiated through our spiritual seeking, we are prepared to be reminded of our relationship with our own Godhead, yeah, divinity, 
become able to withstand the temptations to claim it for herself. So that's the pathway out of spiritual specialness, which we will see a lot here in this year. Here, another infographic, spiritual freedom, is the power to choose your own karma and the liberty to consciously unfold spiritually and culturally. Never give up your freedom to choose. This also has to do with letting go of your tribal karma. All deep spiritual truths embedded in, you know, the big spiritual writings in this world. The alignment, divine wisdom, the MP3, the 20 minute meditation that those of you who are listening or watching the recording that you can listen to at the end of this forecast here and, and has a very, very deep spiritual truth encoded in it. The word, okay? There is the logos that's encoded in this energy alignment, like with any energetic alignment that I put out, to help your soul self, yeah, which is, you know, gateway, yeah, which is the, the, the uh, you know, the, the instance that is the gatekeeper for your soul self, your true self, okay, which is gateway by your true self. needs to have in order to get to that wisdom due to the power of truth guiding me that's the true self i realize that the spiritual journey is a choice and nothing but the way of conscious being and living in truth according to this divine wisdom that is chosen in this way in other words you have to choose an offering you have to choose it to attain it. Those who seek will find me. That's what that means. So active soul embodiment, ready or not, that is the big theme. The main focus uh, should be the courage to deal with inner darkness, yeah, your own egoism, shadow, and to see the necessity or you know, just really embrace it uh, to immediately self-correct. The main challenge is overcoming the fear of loss because that's, you know, the grip that the ego has on us. Yeah. So you got to understand that ultimately the fear of death. Okay. But it can also um, be represented in the fear of loss of money or loss of a relationship or a job or whatever. The main opportunities here in April are obviously, and this is something that I'm intending with this kind of you know, talking about um, the monthly energies to active transformation and avoiding, you know, the, the self-destruct and crisis. So you can't avoid the confrontation with untruths, but you can avoid the drama and the crisis that comes with it. And the way to do this is by eliminating your inner conflicts, by moving into more truth and clarity with yourself. Yeah, honest self-reflection, honest self-correction, uncovering your true purpose. Better energy management and more positivity and creativity. So the overall vibrations that are coming in here with uh, April have to do with pride, specialness, uh, big time, yeah, uh, the things that you could... Um, Oh, that you could feel as, you know, sort of blame, the blame shame game. Okay. And of course the anger, but also the victim. So it's this, this victimizer energy is, it's very, very sore chakra. Yeah. Um, totally clouding your sixth chakra, your third eye, and therefore producing lots of headaches <laughs> in April. You'll see this in, in the slide that summarizes the physical challenges. Now, the higher resonance, the higher vibratory resonances that are coming in have to do with truth, with facing truth, with being courageous, with not caving in, with not succumbing the temptation of the ego and turning everything that comes your way, every struggle, 
every contradiction, every conflict into love. Now listen carefully, this is very, very important. The reason why I have been teaching you guys conscious energy management for so long is for this moment. To transmute pain into love. You've probably read some of these articles that I wrote about this and talks that I have about this. This is real. Energy is just energy, guys. Okay. If an intense anger, intense pain or intense fear comes to you, you have the power to convert this to not just neutralize, but also to turn that intensity into an intensity of love. And guess where you find that power? In your spiritual identity. In loving your soul self and your soul self journey more than your ego. Let me repeat this. You have the power to convert via your consciousness and conscious energy management, energy awareness. To convert any crisis, any intensity of negativity and darkness into love. The Sacred Self Healing Course is fundamentally the instruction manual for that. This is the positive message here. You will learn that this is how you step into your divine wisdom by applying it, by acting on it. Yeah, so any pain, any fear, any darkness, every time you have this self-bashing or this self-loathing or this ruminating or this I'm so bad, uh, I have so many regrets, all that, guys, take that, throw it out and receive the love that comes through that action. There is this alignment behind it that turns that into a powerful energy that you can use for yourself or others. Actually, it's more powerful if you use it for others. So the collective resonance is how they're going to play out. You see here, um, there's an extra arrow these, uh, since last month. Um, uh, because there's big events that are happening right now, okay? And they kind of solicitate these these reactions in us, okay? So there's issues with communication and public services. And uh, lots of specialness and projections, you know, blame shifting, all that, yeah, and self-blame. They go hand in hand here. Yeah, so you have to understand that's your ego self. Yeah, that's uh, the or the collective ego, if you will, that your the 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 layer of your first and seventh chakra. Yeah, it's like you you if you go with the, the collective notion of things, you also get uh, bound to the collective karma of it. So don't go into self blame. Or blaming others don't go into victimhood guys all that is going to draw you into collective karma accept the truth that's your spiritual power okay and allow this plunge this big plunge this crisis to catapult you forward to catapult you into the yeah the noblement of your spiritual identity uh, on the chakra level here um very important that we understand that the past is now past. We need to leave it behind. We need to. We can look back and learn from it, or need to learn from it, and be better at uh, eating and loving our fundamental needs and wants. That because that's something that especially you guys often disregard. Um, on a second chakra level, and this first and second is pretty strong here in April, so um, there's also the physical component of that 
here in a little bit. Uh, that's the where all the regrets and the shadow and the specialness gets triggered by fear. Yeah, it's very important, especially those of you who carry karmic guilt, karmic shame. Okay, you guys gonna stay on your toes. I mean, I'm gonna listen to this alignment every day at least once. This would be my prescription for all of you. Yeah. Uh, some of us have issues with clear communication. This has to do with the courage, with our voice not having been heard in the past, that trauma that I mentioned. So you're going to have to speak up and you're going to have to speak up clearly. And enjoy the relief that comes with not having to pretend anymore. So, yeah, your projections are going to collapse. And that is not comfortable for the ego. But if you see this from a more conscious perspective, then you can recognize that it's actually something that leads you to freedom make more conscious choices. Um, some of you will have a very, very strong six chakra influx. Uh, those of you who can see etheric energies or, you know, sort of perceive them. Um, but even those of you who are not used to seeing etheric energies, you'll have a lot more dream activity. Um, there's a confrontation uh, with the untruth that is obviously, you know, blueprinted in the etheric. And uh, that's already in full motion. So you're going to feel this a little stronger. You have to refine your spiritual visioning now as well. You can't just be afraid of everything that you see there because it's really just a mirror of what is going on here in 3D. Yeah, so... Uh, on a side note, guys, that's why we practiced um, a spiritual visioning last month here uh, within the, the the energy training club. And this is the, I would say, sort of the counterforce to all this crisis talk here is that there is a beautiful, beautiful, heartfelt spiritual journey, uh, yearning that will carry you forward. The new calendar for April is already there. I am super glad that we are doing the Grace Redemption Marathon Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday this coming week. There will not be a marathon next month. Um, instead, we'll have the Trauma Healing Series. Um, every Monday, it's four sessions, as you know, at 4 p.m. EDT. Men, uh, the Europeans among you have had time change now as well. Um, we have the new energy course, the energy awareness training, very recommendable for all of you who haven't done it yet. This is really, really important stuff, systematic and, uh, energetic awareness training. Um, if uh, you don't want to do the, the gray soul self, which is individualized, that's with you, scheduled with you on your time. And you see a combination here of really, really dense energies. Here are the important dates for April. There is uh, a bit of unfolding now coming the next week and uh, some uh, new things that get revealed that put a new spin on things that really change collective perception. Um, there will be uh, aspects of money throughout the whole entire month in the foreground. Um, I saw things like change in inheritance tax, um, like really weird sort of all of the sudden kind of things, new regulations in regards to crypto. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the control of payment systems. So there's a lot of stuff that are going on here that will make it clear to the last one, yeah, who has not been seeing this yet, that there is something going on. Obviously, the real estate um, bubble, if you will, and all the derivatives dealing in the money markets um, is going to collapse as a consequence of this. So they're preparing for this already, and I see this here in this uh, week here. It's very, very dense. This will continue throughout the summer. 
but this is uh, literally the, the initiation of that. So if you want to buy a house or a car or something like that, if you want to make big money transfers or whatever, make sure you get this all done before I would say the 18th um, of April, uh, after that is not a good time anymore. Um, there's a good time here after the full moon uh, where we can, you know, find more support and like-minded and perhaps also new contacts, new um, relationships, new allies, new partnerships. It's really good for socializing and making new friends. So it's not all bad, you know, the, the, the middle of the month is actually quite beautiful. There are great opportunities there. But uh, understand that all the stuff that is going on in the background is steering toward some pretty hefty changes here within the next five months. My self-healing tip is uh, regular meditation, mindfulness exercises, such as listening to the energy alignment or the sacred self-healing meditations. Um, spiritual journeying, really taking this seriously. Take carve this time out. Make it important. Appreciate your spiritual journey. Make it a priority. Yeah. Many of you already have, you know, through you know, being a heart warrior and joining the, the training club, because that's that's the kind of stuff that is going to lead us through this time of crisis. Okay. Avoid selfishness. This is still like a big um, challenge for many of us because we don't have proper boundaries yet. So, you know, self-sacrifice is also a form of selfishness. Very important to understand. Yeah, that's not the balance of things. Having healthy boundaries means, you know, maintaining your main, your, you know, fundamental needs and wants and then... Um, communicating this pro properly yeah and not sabotaging it so that you don't have to take responsibility for things focus on the beautiful in everything in everything that grows because everything that grows guys has an effect mm -hmm. and spent maybe a little bit of refreshing time with Conscious energy management. So the energy course also has a repeater, right? By the way, yeah, this self-correction, you can use this self-report form which is for yourself. Yeah, is this sustainable? Is this desirable? Is this acceptable? Is this spiritually ethical? Yeah, is this spiritual? Is this balanced? That can help you to do this on your own. Yeah, just really engage with this, make this your daily habit. Physical um, issues in this month expected or forecasted. So the head headaches that I mentioned already, this is like your third and your sixth chakra fighting against another. So that, that fogginess, also the seventh chakra. Uh, you have a collective energy. So, you know, don't freak out. Yeah, this is just a sign of the times, low energy. Those of you with low blood pressure, you're going to feel this very, very strongly. You want to cave in. Be careful with your addictions, uh, be it uh, binge TV watching or, um, you know, reading things that are not nurture, nurturing for your soul or substances, of, of course. Take care of your teeth. That's first chakra. Teeth is always first chakra um, and uh, first and fifth. But mostly first, yeah, this is a fundamental need. And hmm, yeah, issues with reproductive organs, that's just something here on the collective level that I see. And just a quick reminder that we have the Race Redemption Marathon starting on Wednesday. And um, the uh, Great Soul Self Easter special, that's something. Uh, that I recommend to people who've never really worked with grace or just here and there, grace integrity, grace manifestation. This is the systematic going through the grace soul cycle every week. Okay. It's 48 sessions. So it's designed for a whole entire year of a soul journey. Those of you who've never really trained energetic awareness, maybe you know people, uh, this is 
you know, it, okay, the energy course. There is nothing comparable anywhere in that way. It's 18 different sessions, six modules, lasts for six weeks, and it's interactive life training. It's an energy training club with or without coaching. That's, I think, the easiest way to understand it. And that's still a very, very inexpensive way to tune into collective energies and to, you know, exercise that spiritual muscle in you. Okay, everyone. I'm wishing you a great April. Divine Wisdom. To the love, the truth, the wise, and the beautiful within, I dedicate myself. I am a soul with a body, a wondrous divine creation on a journey that leads me to remember the divine within beyond my ego's understanding. I embrace wisdom as the evolutionary path of my being in this reality while trusting in my true self to guide me to unfold my highest expression and purpose in life. Yes, I am ready to be one with my true self, the gatekeeper of my individual soul self that I am actualize and embody my eternal and infinite higher self here in this world. As I am seeking the deeper inner connection in this way, I can uncover that how the I am in me bears witness of the Logos, the Divine Consciousness in all, and that it indeed resides in me and all of us as the embodied Christ Consciousness. soul spirit being and feel my soul pulsing through me I can feel the same in everything that grows when I can act with the full awareness of this wisdom that is secreted in this world I can find the way to divine wisdom and with it the source of all existence in me. Any thought, sentiment, imagery or action that increases love, truth, and freedom in my life, feeds and strengthens the relationship with my soul and the divine. Any thought, sentiment, imagery, or action that adds fear or hatred to this world 
feeds the darkness in me and shrivels my soul. When I can overcome the struggle of my ego, I can feel this in me clearly. It allows me to understand and appreciate my journey and this world in a new way. See how this divine wisdom pervades the whole of nature in all its rhythms, epochs and cycles with the beauty and abundance of the eternal light and more by nourishing my spiritual relationship with my I am I can not only reclaim the power of the unified soul self that I am but also feel the warmth of the unconditional love in me that brought me into existence. For this grace, I show gratitude in every waking moment. staying conscious at all times. It reveals that as I am consciously breathing this light and nurturing only what brings more truth, more love, more beauty and more wisdom into this world, I can not only withstand my ego's fears pains and temptations, but also learn to act with the power of this wisdom. I can embrace all learning experiences as evolutionary paths to unfold my highest expression in this reality and easily reclaim all that is lost or that was given or taken away in the past. I can see the divine wisdom in the confrontation with the untruth. But fear not. Because for the divine and the I am in me is greater than for the ego. When I can stand in my light I can allow all mistakes of the past to become important guidance that shows me what I no longer need and end the seeking for love and wisdom on the outside. I realize now that I can only feel this inner love by embodying my true self. Because my true self can show and remind me of the true purpose of this life's experience. It does so through the quality of my body, my emotions and my thoughts. It is neutral and it gives me the freedom I need to explore and learn. But I 
can also be strict and direct when I go against myself unknowingly. As I am learning how my unconscious sensations, feelings and perceptions can confuse or weaken me in my resolve, and how they can pull me into my ego's pain of the past or fear of the future, and all the error perceptions that come with it. I am realizing the power of truth in me. Embodiment means not just to think, feel, and perceive more clearly, and to liberate myself from inner and outer distortions, but it also means to act with the purity of my thought, feeling, and perception. soul self that I am. I now choose to follow only the guiding voice of my true self. Whenever I can remember this, I can trust in my heart's clarity and neutralize and let go of all external influences that do not serve my highest good. Feel the courage needed to get past all these challenges. Due to the power of truth guiding me, I realize that the spiritual journey is a choice and nothing but the way of conscious being and living in truth according to the divine wisdom chosen in this way. I am ready to discern and consciously choose what spirit I serve what I need and what I want, without fear, lack or judgment. I am ready to stay present and consciously discern all that nourishes or shrivels my soul, all that I allow in and that I put out, all that I ingest or expose my body to, all that I energize with my thoughts, all that I project and absorb through my unconscious emotions, and with it, all that I express with my words, attitudes, and actions into this reality. I herewith dedicate my energy only to what brings clarity and courage, what heals me, what empowers my true being and nourishes my soul. I am aware of the importance of making everything a conscious choice because I understand that I not only have the authority and power to choose who I want to experience this life as, but also that others have this choice as well. Yes, I am ready. I am ready 
to become a conscious soul I am, guided by the divine wisdom I seek and expressed through my choice to take responsibility for all my manifestations, conscious or unconscious, and thus embodying the world. Now I can rest in my heart. As all there is left to do is to live and create my life with the courage to love my soul more than my ego. Thank you.